This episode is brought to you by Saycon, which is on my list of apps with the most potential for game-changing savings. Talk to your organization's mobility manager and they'll tell you the nightmare of managing multiple carriers per country, each with their own offerings, contracts, and integrations. Saycon abstracts and manages this for you, eliminating the swivel chair mobility management work and giving you asset and configuration data you can trust. Saycon is mobility managed. Check the description below. Hey everyone, welcome to another ServiceNow Toolbox. I'm Robert Fedoric. It is so good to have you here. Today we are going to talk about journal fields. And before we do, I just want to have a quick shout out to Joel Olives and John Dahl, who really helped me hone my knowledge in this area. So big shout out to you guys. Their profiles will be in the description below. Now, journal fields are awesome because it allows us to put a more nuanced history into our tickets than just the changing of the field values. Now, the most obvious example of journal fields are the work notes and comments fields we've been used to using in task for ages. And if you're going to be doing any kind of application development on ServiceNow, it's important to know how these work. So in this video, we're going to talk about the prerequisites to using journal fields. Then we're gonna talk about the three types of journal fields and why those distinctions matter. We're gonna be doing this in the context of contract management because seriously, contract management doesn't have journal fields? Before we add journal fields, we have to make sure that auditing is on for the tables where we want the fields. If you've never done this before, you have to go to the dictionary and find the collection record for that table. That will be the record that has no column name. Once you've opened that record, just set audit to true and save. Now I mentioned there's three types of journal fields and the first type of journal field is called a journal. A field of type journal will have a string input field and a list of entries to that field displayed below. Watch this example. This is handy when all you want is a history of information from that field along with the way to enter that history close at hand. But there's two other options. The second type of journal field is a journal input field. On a brand new record, this looks almost exactly like the journal field. But once you try to start entering data, the difference becomes obvious. Here I am entering data into the two journal input fields. But where's the journal info going? Now, why would I want a journal field that doesn't display its own journal entries? The answer is actually shockingly simple because with activity log, we already have a kind of journal dumping ground. You can add the journal input fields to the activity log. If you've never done this before, you click the funnel beside activity log, then click the configure available fields option. Then click the name of your input fields. I have two of them and so I'm adding those now. And now we see the journal entries that I was making from the journal input fields in the activity log. So if you're already using activity log and you want new fields to journal into, journal input might be the field type you're looking for. But there's one other possibility as well. What if I wanted a place to enter journal information, but a separate place in order to view it? This might come about if you have one role that's entering journal information into the record and a separate role that is able to view but not enter data into the journal, perhaps even on different form views. Enter the journal list option. And this is a little bit more complicated than the previous two because you have to set up dependency. Here we are on the dictionary definition for a journal list column. You'll also notice that I'm in the advanced view because I have access to the dependency tab. All we need to do is set dependency and then pick a journal or journal input field for this journal list to be dependent on. I'm going to pick journal input one. Now let's take a look at our journal list on the form and it too is displaying the entries I was making to the journal input fields. Okay, special bonus. You may have noticed that I had two journal input fields and wouldn't it be cool if both of those journal input fields output to the journal list field. In fact, Back in 1912, that's exactly how work notes and comments worked. So we're gonna go to the dictionary and look for journal input fields on the task table. Here we have the work notes and comments field that I was just mentioning. And we pull it up and you'll notice that the dependency is a string that just lists the fields it is dependent on. Now, when I pull up the dictionary entry for my journal list field, I can't find a way to get that dependency string. So we should probably give up, right? Mm. 
I didn't have time or energy to figure out how to get access to that string without modifying the dictionary form. So instead I went to a list view, I customized the list view so that it showed the dependency column, and I took my string of comma delimited fields that I wanted the journal input to be dependent on, and I just pasted it into that cell. Mm, I love list view editing. Now let's go back to our form, see what our journal list is displaying, and you see that it is displaying entries from both the journal input one and the journal input two fields. There's an interesting bug you can sometimes come across if you're not careful. This bug only manifests if you have the journal and the activity log in the same form section, and you are also tracking the journal in the activity log. What happens then is that the entries to the journal are stacked above the journal input field instead of below it. It's annoying, but you really should be judicious about where you're displaying the journal entries anyway. I can't see a situation where I need to have the journal entries displayed twice in the same form section. And there you have it folks, everything you need to know about journal entries. And remember, setting up ServiceNow Toolbox before I even film can be an exercise measured in hours. Now that I've secured sponsorships, I'm willing to share the bulk of that sponsorship money for help prepping my instances and coming up with scripts for new shows. So if you're interested in doing that, making a little bit of money on the side, hit me up at this email here, and I look forward to hearing from you. If you're a ServiceNow expert looking for better opportunities, but maybe your resume or LinkedIn profile isn't doing you justice, reach out to me via LinkedIn or the email pictured here as I offer both career coaching and recruitment services. And if you're a ServiceNow customer or partner, you heard that right. Robert Fedoric now does ServiceNow recruiting. With a 1,500 subscriber YouTube channel and mailing list and thousands of LinkedIn followers, let's make sure your open positions get first go at the prodigious pool of ServiceNow resources. Reach out via the email picture here.